This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. This is my latest Afghan in a day or even less pattern and it has a lot of interesting techniques. First of all, it has pico hems on the top, the bottom, and the sides and it has a very nice looking easy corner detail. Next, it has graphic short rows for the triangles, the big diamond in the middle, and the stripes that go around the big diamond in the middle. This is a really fast one to knit and I took advantage of some crazy self-striping yarn to make a really fun afghan with a lot of graphic movement. This pattern is linked in the description below. And today what I'm going to show you is how to make a graphic diamond and how to make the graphic triangles around it. Today what I wanted to show everybody was something quick, a short row graphic diamond, which is of course a key part of a number of my Afghan inner day or less patterns that I've been putting out one by one. So let's get started on this. I'm on my bulky machine and I made a very simple start of this by doing an e-wrap cast on and knitting a couple rows with white yarn. You could do this on any machine. When we knit, we have the wrong side facing us. And looking at my sample, I'm going to start by making this triangle. That will be the first thing I do. This triangle will be the second thing I do. When you do graphic designs, you always have to do the items on the bottom. And then you can do the item above it. So this shape above it, this diamond, will be done third. I'm going to change the setting on my carriage so it doesn't knit held needles. I have slid this lever from N to H and now it will only knit the needles in work. This bottom triangle starts by knitting from here to here. We call this short rowing because normally we would knit the whole width but we're going to knit from here to here, stop and go back. And each row after that is either going to be the same or shorter. So it gets shorter and shorter and that forms the triangle. I am going to knit to the center. My needles were from 20 left to 20 right. So I'm knitting over to number one on the right. And then I'm going to start my shape. So over I go. And I'm going to pull this needle into hold. I took my comb off and you can see that as soon as I took the comb off this tried to crawl up. I want to hold it down and weights are just really useful for short rowing anyway. So I'm putting a couple claw weights in place and I have decreased here by pulling this first needle to the right of zero, number one right, out into hold and I knit back. When I knitted back, it didn't knit this needle. It just laid the yarn over it, and then it knitted this needle and the rest. And then I knit back, so that was decrease one, knit two rows, and now I decrease again on this side by the carriage and knit two rows. And I do likewise. The whole time, I keep moving my weights over. This goes really fast. Decrease, knit two rows, and decrease, knit two rows. And every few stitches, I need to move a weight. So there's actually weight under the yarn because you can already see the triangle forming. Every few rows, my row gets shorter. Now these big simple shapes, like the diamond in the center, go really fast. And these afghans are good for using scraps. You could make each of the shapes in the afghan a different color. Or you could elect to do striping in some of the shapes and use up all kinds of odds and ends. Now when I get over to this far side, I only have one needle left to knit, 
So I go to the right, it knits that last needle, and I pull it in to hold. Now, why? Because the next job will be the triangle on the left, and I have to get there from here. I'm going to cut this yarn. Here's that triangle I just knitted. And I'll just leave one weight on there and go to the other side so I can start the next triangle. Now I'm going to do a free pass. With every needle in hold like this, the carriage can slide on over and it won't disturb anything. If I bump some needles in though, it might knit them. So you stop and you make sure that every needle is in hold. And there goes my free pass. My carriage wasn't even threaded when I did that. My next job is to make a triangle on the left. It's super simple. It's just about like the triangle on the right. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start by pushing the needles that I'm knitting on the first row to upper working position, which is just knitter lingo for halfway back. And I push the needles over to needle one, so all the needles I didn't use last time are going to be knitted. I'm going to use white again. And when I knit across, all the needles over to the first needle in hold knitted. Claw weights will be very helpful. So I'm putting a couple of claw weights on. My carriage is on the right. I'm decreasing here by bringing this needle into hold. It's the next needle after the group in hold, and I knit two rows. This is the same pattern as before. Decrease and knit two rows. Every few passes, I move my weight so there's weight under the area that's actually needed. You might notice that as I short row, I like to hold that first stitch down. That can be a problem stitch. This yarn coming out of it could pull it up or it could even unravel it. So I always hold it down with my other hand before I make my two rows. When I get to one needle, I'm going to knit it. My carriage is on the left. I pull that needle out into hold and I cut my yarn. As I said earlier, our next job will be the diamond in the middle. And it consists of a triangle getting wider and wider up to here and then getting narrower and narrower up to here. You can knit the entire diamond because the triangles are attached later. So bigger, 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 then smaller, smaller, smaller. So let's get started on that. My first area that I'm going to knit is in the very center needles, one left and one right, two needles in the very center. I just push those two center needles in with my thumb and I take the blue yarn and thread it in the carriage. Then I bring the blue yarn under the sinker plate over all those needles in hold and I kind of fold it around that last needle in hold before the first upper working position needle. And I've got a good size clothespin that I'm going to use as a weight to just hold that down. Now as I approach, if I have a lot of needles to go over, I will lift up on this yarn so that it doesn't loop, so that there's a little tension on it. And then when I get close, I let go of the yarn. I knit those two needles, and this little weight makes them drop down. It was just a clothespin worth of weight. I'm taking 
a claw weight from somewhere else, and I'm going to put it under those two needles in the middle, like that. It's hanging off one corner of the weight. So here's that claw weight just hanging off a corner. And now I'm going to make the center diamond. This is so easy and it has such a fun rhythm. I push the needle opposite the carriage. Carriage is on the right, yarn's coming from the right. I push the needle opposite the carriage into upper working position so it'll knit and I knit across. And then opposite the carriage on the right, I push this one into upper working position and knit across. Now you could do it this way with your hand up here. That would be fine. What you want to do is push it back until the latch, this tiny latch right here, touches the previous row yarn. But I like to do it with my hand from underneath because then I've got one hand to push the carriage, one hand to push the needles, and I can go fast. You can definitely see the triangle forming, and I've got some weight on it, even though it was only in the center, and I'll move my weight up. And after a little bit, you realize that it would be better to have weight on either end of the triangle, so there'd be weight closer to the problem areas, which are always these first and last needles. If you get interrupted and you're not sure where you are, well, look at the next white needle and say, well, I haven't knitted that yet, and I've obviously knitted this one yet, so I know I haven't increased yet. So I push that in. I went right out to the end and knitted all the needles in the blue. And the blue yarn is coming from right here. If I had wanted, if I wanted a different design, I could have stopped and just made a smaller triangle and had more background. But I went all the way to the edge. Now, I am going to bring out a needle on the carriage side. That's a decrease. Knit across. Do a needle on the carriage side on the left, decreasing, and knit to the right. Decrease, knit to the left, decrease, knit to the right, and you've guessed it. I'm about to get in there with a couple of weights and put weights over under the... I'm putting my weights under the side stitches that are knitting and that will help. And I'll have to move them every few rows. Now, after I knit the last two, I put those in hold, and of course I'm going to do those two top triangles next, but I think it's really interesting to see what we have at this point, because it is not flat. All of these wrinkles right here in the knitting are because this diamond is tall and it's all crushed down under these needles. So this won't be a nice rectangle until the side triangles are knitted. It's time to do those side triangles and one of the things I like to do is hold the wrinkles down with one of the weights and then put a weight on each end. And I might want another weight for the edge as I work the triangle. This triangle is a little different. The first triangles 
simply decreased every two rows. This triangle will increase every two rows. So I have cut the blue yarn and put it down there. And if I want, I can hang a clothespin on it to hold it down there. And then I grab the white yarn, thread my machine over on the right, and I'll focus on the right-hand side of the work so you can see the procedure. I am going to knit the first needle. So I pushed it back halfway, and I'm going to do two rows. And then I'm going to knit the second needle. And then the third. And it's already forming a little small triangle there, and I'll get that weight on it. And then I'll keep on. The fourth. This is 40 stitches wide, so I'm going to do this routine of knitting two rows 20 times. And I'll know I'm on the last one when I'm on needle one on the right, which is right at my center mark. I am not really feeling the need for a weight there because you see it's pulling down pretty well and I'm almost at the center. Okay, that was my right triangle. And I'll put these needles in hold. I'm going to cut the yarn because I have to get to the other side and make the left triangle. And over I go. Here I am on the left hand side with just one weight right here. I've threaded my machine with the white yarn and I'm pushing in that first needle on the far left and doing my two rows. And then the second needle, two rows. Getting a good purchase on it with the claw weight. all I'd really have to do is look for the last blue stitch and I'd know I had it. So this would be my last row. If I wanted I could knit all the way across and I don't know, I don't think I'll bother. I think I'll just knit to there and cut my yarn Now what I'd like to do is knit a few rows over all the needles just to put an ending on this just so that you can see the whole diamond when I hold it up. I've got some lavender yarn that I'm going to use that will give you a contrast so that you can see the shapes. I could either push these right hand needles into upper working position or I could change the carriage so that it knits all the needles. Either one would work at this point in time. I just pushed them in because that was so quick and easy. So now I'm just putting a waist yarn ending on this. If you were making a blanket, you would have done a hem or something on the bottom, and you would do a hem or something on the top. If you took it off on waist yarn like this, you would probably just add some sort of edging. And if you're a beginner, I've got your back. I've got lots of edgings that you can try. Anyway, let me pull this off. Now here's my finished sample. And I'm just holding it up in front of the machine. It has not been blocked. So if I unroll it with my fingers, you can see these bottom shapes. 
the two triangles and the diamond in the middle and here are the two triangles on the top. This makes a nice rectangular shape. It's kind of fun to watch this diamond unwrinkle in the middle as you do the side triangles. You get some funny shapes hanging on, on the machine. This is much, much faster than intarsia knitting, and you get an extremely tidy color change between the white and the blue. On the front, it just sort of jogs on up every two rows, and on the back, no floats whatsoever, nothing to catch a finger or a toe in, absolutely a beautiful finish on the back. Back in the day, people made argyles and all kinds of interesting designs by knitting diamonds this way. I wanted you to see the joins on the decreases. They also look absolutely perfect, and again, there are no floats on the back. And that was extremely fast and easy to do. Hope you'll give it a try and see if you enjoy this technique.